I didn't realize until I started recording how clean shaven I look. Sweet baby Jesus. Your boy just got a fresh haircut and a fresh shave because we're going out tonight with my buddies celebrating my birthday, the big old 27. But more importantly than that, we've got two new cards coming out of uh, Age of Overlord. They're called Ken and Den, and they're about to shake up the format just like how I'm about to shake up this Taco Bell in my bathroom after we get done eating, and I'm hungry as you know what. Let's dive on into it, shall we? Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's your host with the most, April R32 here, and destroyed the ever-living boo-boo Ken Brownstain off of that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher, the 1200 ladder. We're getting very close to 1300, and it is definitely making me a happy little boy. <laughs> um, we got to talk about these cards, Ken and Jen. Jen is straight up looking like a Yu-Gi-Oh player sitting on a chair at a regional, and then Ken is just a rip-off version of Bestiari. Um, these cards are absolutely insane. So we, I wanted to make a video talking about how I basically already broke these cards with a little bit of help from a, a buddy of mine. And by a little bit of help, I mean a lot of help. <laughs> um, this isn't going to be a deck profile so much as like just showing off like what kind of lines you can get away with in tier. Um, so to start off, the effects of the Ken and Jen are irrelevant. The only thing that you need to know is that Ken's effect when he's on the field, he can special summon Jen from your hand or deck to the opponent's field, and Jen summons Ken to the opponent's field from hand or deck. So whenever Ken is summoned by the effect of Jen, he draws two and then ditches one. Jen, whenever he's summoned by Ken to the opponent's field, it makes that player ditch a card. So it would make the opponent ditch a card in this case. What's so amazing about these cards is that it turns on things like Triple Tactics, Talent, and Thrust, and just makes them absolutely bonkers. And so hopefully now it will actually go to another screen, I hope. Uh, sometimes my uh, recording software on my PC doesn't always go to the next screen. Uh, and already you're seeing like how this can be busted. Uh, you play Imperm here because you can go Thrust to grab Imperm. Any deck that doesn't need its normal summon can run Ken and Jen. Uh, and then, of course, you can also use Rhoda to get to these cards. So we're going to go Summon Ken. We're going to activate the effect. We are going to go for uh, the Jen, and then we are going to move him on over there. Jen's effect is going to activate, making the opponent ditch a card. Had we instead opened up Jen, then, of course, we would have drawn two and then ditched one. We could have ditched Tier Element, Cash Tier, in order to get a play. Uh, at this point, we can go Foolish. The opponent is now playing with a four-card hand. And if they didn't Imperm our Ken, they now cannot use Imperm because they have a card on their field. Um, and at this point, we can go for... I mean, we could go for Rhino to ditch the tier element and then send a tier. So I think that that's going to be the best thing. We'll go Rhino. Rhino's effect is going to summon. Rhino's going to activate, dumping off the tier element. Um, and then we can go, say, like, Chain Link 1, tier element, Chain Link 2, Rhino to dump the Merly and then mill two more cards. Uh, so we'll go this, and then the tier element cash tier will mill two more cards. Uh, and we hit another tier element cash tier. So then we can use Merly for fusion lines and like just go off from there. Um, what's also really busted about this is, and maybe we'll open with it here, if not. Okay, we at least got Hoffenis. So let's put back the tier element cash tier and I can show you why this is insane. So, Hoffenis is a level 3 monster, and, like, that's pretty much all you need to know. Uh, let's say that you open up uh, Jen, right? We're going to go Normal Summon Jen. We're going to activate the effect of Jen, giving the opponent our Ken. It sounds like I'm talking about freaking Barbie. Uh, Ken, and then we're going to move it on over there. Ken's going to trigger letting us draw 2, ditch 1. That's going to chain Hoffenis because the opponent is activating a monster effect. So, you go Hoffenis. You're going to mill 3. Uh, if this will actually like not lag on me uh, and then we'll be able to draw two and then ditch one off of the Ken and that's just like the most free value that you could ever get we drew two and look at that we just hit Aigido plus we also hit Scream and Tier Element Cash Tira off of our mill three dude we're practically milling ourselves out off of this combo plus the opponent's losing five off the top of their deck and like we're just getting all the plus like we're gonna get Sullick to hand we're gonna mill seven cards off the top of our deck like i'm 
like let's just see what we hit here uh slash whoop, slash mill seven and we hit one two three four five six seven yeah so we hit heartbeat Sullock would have already been added to our hands so that actually changes up our mills too so yeah like this is just insane you have talents and uh thrust live so like thrust can get you to infirm like you have so many lines here that you can take this down plus you have two level threes up so like you can go for like a rank three exceed like levy air if you need to get something that's banished you have two monsters up for a cross sheep or for like a mascarena to go into little knight or pit knight early like uh, you have so many lines here you could also do dante because they're both level threes to mill three more fucking cards like it, it's it's absolutely insane now i'm sure some people are going to say oh well avery i'm just going to play droll or i'm just going to play d shifter look like if if you hit the fucking d shifter like congratulations like that's just Yu Gi Oh. the point that i'm making here is that like even with something like droll or imperm like okay you're i'm gonna draw two ditch one and you're gonna draw me i'm still probably gonna have other lines because tier can just play through so much and like if you don't use imperm on the ken or the gen then you're denied the imperm because of the fact that you're gonna have a card on your board so these cards inherently force outs that the opponent would otherwise not be using and that is just like what is so insane about these cards plus again like they're level three light warriors like that kind of combo can be used for a lot of different things whether it's rota to grab it because it's a warrior um using it with warriors um like infernobles and stuff with i sold going connector into aqua dolphin aqua dolphin ripping a card going for uh ken or jen whichever getting more cards out of the opponent's hand using talents to rip yet another card like now we're talking about like four cards or something being ripped out of the opponent's hand like if the aqua dolphin hits one jen hits two talents hits three uh, god forbid you're playing omega and you just decide to rip a fourth card out of the opponent's hand like we're starting to get into like topologic gumblar dragon hand ripping shenanigans at this point like the possibilities are really endless with this so i just want to make this video showing off this concept this is going to be good it is going to exist luckily ken and jen are both commons thank god um but this is why i said you may want to get a case of age of overlord uh because these tcg exclusives just threw the whole format on its head because now you have to consider like this is going to be played in tier you hope that if you summon out jen and the opponent ditches a card you have to hope to god that they're not playing dark world or tier which I mean, if they are, then they are. It's whatever. I really don't know if it's going to be as good in Dark World as people say it is because you have to hit these cards. And the question becomes, are you really going to play Rota for what's going to probably be like five targets? The ratios are going to probably be like two and three um, with maybe some variance in between. Like maybe you play two of this and three of this. Are you really going to play Rota with like, let's say five targets in a Dark World deck? That just seems a bit bricky. Like there's no reason to be playing Foolish Burial to dump these. Like they don't do anything in the graveyard. So maybe we'll see Dark Worlds and Dangers come together in tier to get more ditching. I was also thinking this is a bit on like the cheesy side and it probably won't be played, but keep in mind that exchange of the spirit is a thing like if you're able to mill enough cards off the top of the opponent's deck like you just use thrust to go for exchange of the spirit if like you don't have access to keldeo or medora to search it for you and like you're just good or you just mill the exchange of the spirit and remember if exchange of the spirit is face up on the field or in the grave then the keldeo and medora can send back five cards instead of three and the reason why i say that you could potentially play this is because you've got so much gas with the ken and the gen and hand ripping and getting cards in the opponent's grave that it's it's not going to be difficult i feel for them to get 15 cards into their grave on your first turn and then when you activate this you just chain keldeo and medora to send back 10 cards and the opponent's playing with a five card deck like even with like let's say a five card hand because you ripped one out with jen how are they going to beat your established board with five cards in deck and five in hand like that seems really insane to me so guys let me know what you think down in the comments below these cards are busted like these are this is there's a reason why these cards say custom because uh, konami just printed some custom cards like these are straight up custom cards like this is insane thank you guys for watching and i will see you in the next video